Namaste. Hi. Join me in my self-practice. I'll be practicing my usual routine, but as I do it, I'll give you some modification and tips on how you can adapt, yeah, but still achieve the same benefit of that particular technique. All right. So I always start with the Matsyak Didasana. Yeah. So bending one knee to the side and let the head rest there. Then you can rub the opposite thigh in and out of the joint and then folding the knee too. And circle around. What I like about this position, it's a combination of many elements. It's restorative, it's opening, you know, decompressing, it's a side stretch. And it's good for uh, setting the pace of the cardiorespiratory system because this one opens the lungs, you know, decompresses the brain. And as you can notice, you can add many elements in conjunction to this, like circling around the knee joints, the hips. Okay. Now you can turn the head the other way. You can reach one arm forward uh, to create more space of the shoulder. And if you feel like the shoulder needs some rubbing, you can lift. All right. And then from there, yeah, that uh, yeah, arm corresponding to the bent knee open to the side. And then just flip over that shoulder. Good. If you're not ready, you're gripping your leg or gripping your hands, you can just go to a half flip. Yeah. Or to advance, both knees kneel and reach for the hand behind you. And you can rub back to the floor and then open and then down and then open. Good. And you can move the head around in circles. You know, collarbone to collarbone. All right, and then back to the floor. All right, and then reaching that arm, yeah, you flip over, you know, two, and then just keep that nice circling around, okay? And then keeping the side long, bending the other knee. So you're just changing, actually, yeah? And then rest, and circling around. I always go back to Masikridasana in between the advanced positions. So this one is um, quite a universal technique you know, for recovery, for opening, for preparing. All right. And then flipping over the opposite arm. At the same time, you're twisting already. So that's how I do my self-practice. Yeah, because I teach classes in between, so to save time, you know, to manage my time effectively, I do compound techniques. Yeah, you can fold the head to one side there, and you can rub the hip as well. And lacing the hand is just a bonus behind you. Good. You can lightly move away from the stretch. And open. Good. You can fold the head, open the head, and look behind you, and to the floor. And then settle again. Yeah. Sometimes I would extend that leg, and then twist <laughs> the hip as well. Not always move with awareness. Yeah, the limitations. Yeah. It should feel a good stretch and not a burning stretch. Okay, and then come back. But <laughs> extending that arm, you rolled over to, and you can do another round of the flapping fish or the massacre doesn't. All right, and then the other side too. All right, we're going to go back in this position yeah, as we practice along. But for now, come down kneeling. And then sit back to your hips, and then do a bit of a crawling side to side. Good. Feels like my spine is already open, like I've done many rounds of a vinyasa already. And exhale, settle. Right, and then from there, yeah, 
I'll just do a downward facing dog and an alternating three legged dog to the back. Lifting and kicking, angling a little bit wide already, so anticipating for that opposite hip to open. You can also lighten that corresponding hand, and then you can circle around the hip a few times before you change. All right, and then just walking the dog, bending and stretching them. All right, and then from there, you sit through the floor in front. The first part of the class, I always use this smooth cushion. So I, I keep my joints light as I rub through the floor. All right, arms wide, side to side those hips, lifting and then twisting. Yep. The first round, I will hug them together so I can practice you know, a few you know, conscious effort of the Vajrali Mudra. Lightly clip, exhale, loosen, inhale, lightly clench the inner genital region, and then come down, loosen. Just awaken the nerves of the pelvic floor. Okay, and I will loosen, and then adding the swinging you know, to open. Yeah, and the lower back, and at the same time, yeah, stretch and twist the spine again. Okay, and then you can rub high, all right, one leg, and reach over. All right. If this is intense, you can just yeah, keep the hand there, or the opposite hand may loop over the head and then loosen. Yeah, I would lift that leg too, and rub that leg around. And then it's swinging, yeah, hip to hip. Good, and then take the other one. Yeah. Don't force it if you need to rub that a few times before you loop your hand over. Good. Rotating externally. Good. And then this leg, yeah, circle around, so I'm gaining access already. Yeah. To the inner linings of my hips and deep down the hip joint. Can lightly peel that shoulder over that side. All right. And bouncing the legs and circle them around. And a few more side to side. Okay. And from there, you can just roll to the side, but I will normally rock to the sitting position and then transitioning forwards and stretching backwards. All right, bend and stretch. And then alternating three-legged dog again, up behind. Yeah. My cell practice is quite moving. Yeah. Quite restless. Yeah. But there are times that I also do static ones. Yeah. But for the day, I'd like to do yeah, mobility. All right. And then drop to your knees. You can fold the blanket. Yes, I will be doing my sure sasana. Yeah, I do my arm balance, upper back uh, work in the beginning of the session because towards the end I will be doing deep flexibility of the spine and the hips. All right, pressing, breathing in. Now you can just stay halfway. If you're not doing the heel stand, just remain on the forearms. Sir. Pull the shoulders back. You can loosen yeah, your tighter side there. My right shoulder tends to contract as I lift myself up. So adjust that elbow. As long as it feels good inside, you're well. You're fine. You're right. And then breathe. I stay here about five or ten mindful breathing. But I sometimes keep the shirsasana. Some days I'm not practicing it. Instead, I'll do arm balances, particularly the handstand. But for today, I'd like to do both. All right, and then coming down with control and then to the floor. You kneel a bit, 
and slide to side to side. So that increases the strength of my upper back and also the energization of the brain. Right. And then forward and do the alternating three-legged dog. Once more lifting and twisting. And then walking and marching the downward facing dog. All right, I will thread yeah, one knee through. Uh, so some static yeah, hip flexor stretching, rubbing from hip to hip. Okay, and then both legs in front. Right. And my Bharat Vajrasana. Yeah, sometimes I would do a Kunchasana before I do my Bharat Vajrasana. Crossing one hand behind. You can just place that foot inside, yeah, without. Yeah, binding behind you. Yeah, like this. Yeah. And then here, yeah, it's also a compound element. You're stretching the elbow. You can lightly look away. And stretching the collarbone, the neck, and look to the back. And then shift forward to your wrist and then circle around your hip joint. And then settle for a breath or two. You can keep that shoulder. Nice rubbing around the neck. All right, and tangle and crossing. And then at this point, um, I will be practicing flat already. Exhaling, all right. Push your way up. And then flowing to the back, all right. But I don't flip over, rather I'll do this and circle around. I tend to preserve my energy yeah, for the advanced ones later on. Sometimes I do a vinyasa, you know, but for me I feel this is more opening. Yeah, I, I get you know, to gain access to those spaces and I will flip over that shoulder again. And then the other one. And I'll do it maybe one or two times per side. All right, and back to the middle. And a child's position. But stay. Just angle my mat. All right. And then forward, and what you normally jump to, maybe a forward stand, or a jump up to the handstand, yeah? depending on how my hips and the body feels. I'll try to jump up to handstand. All right, and then try again. <laughs> And then here I'll just stay, maybe three breaths sometimes, and then come down. And then yes, flow, yeah, down the floor, and around in circles, yeah, and a bit of a side to side. All right, you can lift and then kick that leg, vibrating, yeah. Flip over the shoulder again, and then rub it, and the other one. All right, and back to the floor. And then sitting back to a light child stretch. This part of me is the tighter side. So just give me some you know, limitations. It hinders me from you know, lifting to my full potential. Yeah. So I do random stretching for that side. All right, then I settle.
Okay. Yeah. I feel like doing a hand press. My hips are quite loose, so I'd like to gain access to those deep pockets. And this yeah, is my way of preparation. Um, I'm not strong, actually, muscularly. So I need to really gain access to those deep pockets. And I use my tongue a lot in gaining yeah, potentials. Yeah, but it's light. Yeah, I don't push my muscles too hard. Rather, I use the space inside and the breath. And my tongue is really very active when I do my asana. And then <laughs> touch the ground. Yeah. Okay, and then walking the knees. Good. And then swinging them. Good. And I'll do a backflip. Yeah, easy ostrasana, just to open, yeah, the front of the body after, yeah, those flexion. You can just, yeah, maybe do a supported one, yeah, or you can tuck the toes and walking the knees in the middle. And then rise, folding the hips slightly back, and then walking the knees. You can wave a bit of a spiral. All right, swinging and stepping to the back, yeah? And do the alternating three-legged dog. I do this a lot, yeah? Rotating around like a mandala in the hip just socket. All right, and then sitting, maybe I'll press, try, and to the floor in front. Yeah? And a mindful restoration, but keep moving the joints. Right. And then opposite leg bends. If this is intense, just cross it inside. Yeah? Uh, sometimes I will just hang loose here. Not too strict about the technicality of the um, the asana. Feel it more internally. Yeah, really those lines and spaces where <laughs> the body parts are attached. Yeah. Those are like organic uh, mudras, kriyas. You do it because your inner body feels it. So this is now where the asana becomes more than just a physical technique. They're a way for us to gain access to the energy pockets. Therefore, they become like mudras, organic way of accessing the energy channels. Like your body moves in crooked, yeah, random positions, spontaneous twitching, and rubbing around the joints. Because their energetic anatomy is so open, you can feel you know, where the energy is stuck inside and by gaining access to those deep pockets, yeah, you free the body of stagnation. Therefore, you create lightness and space. So it's the advanced asana, for example, the handstand, the headstand, even later on as we do, as I do my deep back bends, they are just the expression of the inner body opening up. That's uh, the purpose of the asana, personally, yeah, in my self-practice. I, I just don't do them for the sake of doing them. Yes, they um, benefit my health and my wellness, but mostly, and the main reason why I practice the steep ones is for me to gain access to my energetic anatomy. Because later on, I will use that openness 
during my meditation. All right, I'm crossing, yeah, and tangling. Yeah. Uh, and I'm pressing. If you're not pressing, you can just tuck to the side. Eh? All right, and then loosen, circling around, finding side to side. You can lift. And then flipping that shoulder again. And the other one. Okay. And then back to the floor. Now let me try another round of the hand pressing, the hand standing. If you're not doing the handstand, you can do, for example, a bakasana or the bird pose. Okay, every time I talk, I lose it. Yeah, exhale, and then forward, and then down. You can see, every time I do my arm balancing, my, my tongue is actually digging through the inner pockets of my mouth. And the moment I talk, you know, I lose the axis. All right. Okay, let me try and do a jump through between the hands and sit. Okay, and then down and up and down. Good. And I feel this too. We are fanning and twisting, rotating, and circling around. Okay, and this one is actually one of my favorites. Yeah, reaching over yeah, for a deep side stretch. Yeah, if this is intense, you can do a side angle position. Side angle position is this. But I like to do it lying down. Yeah. So I can also open the hip and then do some internal and external adjustment of my hip joint. One more per side. Yeah, shake that leg up. Uh, maybe yeah, hold a bit longer, settling it. You can hook one hand over. Okay, I'm back to the middle, yeah. Up and down across, rocking up and down. And you can just tuck to the side. I'll try to press this all the way up. Behind, maybe a flip. And your dog. Yeah, free like a dog. Alternate. I do this a lot too. But if you have, for example, yeah tight low back, you, know, you might just want to walk your feet, eh? Okay. And one more press, handstand. I love doing this because this it's like very compound element of working on strength, balance. And it's a good way for like opening yeah, the inner body. And then adjusting, matching. All right, and it's time for my back pin sequence. All right, sitting and notching.
Also, when I do my self practice, sometimes I would go back to a certain element, either for recovery, yeah, or for example, if I perform my astrasana and I feel like I miss the uh, yeah, inner pockets inside, I will try and repeat it for a few more times. Walking my knees. All right, and up. And then marching, up and down. Yeah, like your hips dance. You can even circle around. <laughs> I'm doing many breathing techniques when I do my self-practice, like the many combinations of the pranayama, yeah, but I suit it to adapt yeah, how I feel inside the body. Yeah. Preferring, you can just do yeah, like the crescent lunge. But, uh, I'll try to do a uh, hand to floor. Ekapada, Raja Kaputasana, or Ekapada Kaputasana. Like my way of preparing for my deep back pins. I find this yeah, posture, yeah, the single leg kaputasana, actually lighter than the full kaputasana. Maybe because I'm using yeah, the lever coming from that open leg to assist me. But this requires really deep strength of the core. Because you're just depending on one leg to support you. All right. And I will lift and come back up. Yeah. The first try is always yeah, the bad try. Yeah. It's not always perfect when you do yourself practice. Our bodies are different. Yeah. You're light today. The following day, you're heavy. Even <laughs> the following hour, you're going to feel really heavy and stop. When I'm walking, yeah, I feel like my left side is a bit tight inside. Not really tight, but like lines and spaces I, I need to gain access. Okay. Yeah, I'll try a couple of now. Every time you attempt to do a curl back, you move away from the stretch, inhale. And exhale, fold to the back, inhale. And exhale, fold to the back. Yep. I'll try to assess, well, where am I? Yep. Okay. Loosen, come up. Gain access to those inner hips. All right, I'm ready. All right, it's too far. Come forward, uh, walk the knees. Yes, yeah, more stable, more open. And I can already reach. The first one, I would use my toes, yeah, the great space. All right, and relax them. All right, rubbing the elbows to the midline. You can lightly turn the head. Yeah. So you can open the shoulder and easy down the floor. <laughs> Even at this stage of my practice, oh, the kaputasana is really one of the most challenging, if not the most challenging asana for me. And I do it almost every day, actually, daily. Walking the knees. Mm, 
Yes. Yeah, you might have, yeah, um, inform you. I've not informed you in the past that I have really deep yeah, uh, thoracic curvature, yeah, and the scoliosis. And in the back bend, I need to really gain access to those you know, wavy lines inside my spine. Therefore, I uh, crawl and I do spiraling action as my practice, as I practice my back bend. Sitting back. All right, hands. Breathing in, in here, I feel like, yeah, the side of me is yeah, quite loose. And then when that side of the body is loose, the, jo the joints tend to <laughs> slip out of their sockets. Therefore, I need to readjust them. All right. The other leg. This is my flexible side, but it doesn't mean that if it's flexible, it's lighter. Actually, during deep asana, the flexible side tends to become <laughs> the more problematic side because you're so loose, there's a huge tendency for your joints yeah, to slip out of the sockets or their connection. Therefore, you have to be more careful. Yes. Oh, feels good, this one. Nice and open in the spine. Even the shoulder, sometimes I have to hug it or rub it. And up. Good. So that's my first round of the backbend sequence. Yeah. When I do my backbend, once I finish that initial stage, the rest becomes slight. <laughs> and up. Because personally, I really started so bad at backbending, I can't even do an instructional. I am more of a flexing person because of my nature, because of my physical structure, and maybe because of my yeah, spiritual nature too. I'm more of that inward, yeah, introverted personality. And then opening the chest, yeah, that's one thing that's really very, well, challenging for me. Yeah, both physically, maybe mentally and spiritually and emotionally too. Yeah? And folding back. Oh, this one is lighter. But still. Yeah. No, not easy, actually. It's lighter, but it's still challenging. Sometimes I'll hang here. You don't have to rush, hang loose, breathe, come up and sway. Yeah, my left knee runs away, so I will <laughs> discipline it so it, go, it remains in the midline. All right, like that. Hugging to midline. Oh, my left brain is so open. I could hear the nada already. And that's what I mean when I say 
I am using my asana to gain access to the energetic anatomy and adjust the body. All right, that's what I'm chasing for. All right, feels good. Ooh, nice and deep, yeah. Walking, inching. It's never easy. It never gets easy to go for that, not really. Yeah. And then forward. Yeah, sometimes I'll flow, but the flow is just for me to work around yeah, spaces I might, I might have missed performing the asana. Okay, I feel like doing one more per side and another one or two kapotasanas. Hugging the midline. Loosen. Um. Mm, feels good. Every time I do my back bend, I feel like my whole body inside opens. is actually something that really helps me manage my imbalances, the openness in the way I breathe, and even it changes my mood, my mental situation. Come up, yeah, adjusting. Loosen a bit that inner thigh. Beautiful. And up. Walking. Inching. Yeah. And rubbing around the joints. Yeah. Kapatasana. up a bit, yeah, gain access, shoulders, neck, mouth, tongue, breathe, this position Kapatasana was <laughs> way too advanced for me when I was studying, I didn't even think yeah, it was going to happen to me. But you know, when the body is open, the energy will naturally lead to this, to opening your spine. And I've never heard myself doing deep back bends. Really, it's interesting. I would um, maybe hurt my joints walking or running or doing my weight training but never in my back bends, never in my asana. All right. <laughs> Sometimes just doing your household chores <laughs> hurts you. Yeah. But the practice, because you're mindful, you're using the breath. Yeah. It's safe, even those deep ones. But of course, this will require plenty of years of preparation. All 
right? Last to this side. Gripping to the midline, and that will stabilize your hips. You can walk that foot to the middle. We're pressing into the outer edges of the knee to prevent your tail from scooping to further under. All right, that's enough. Come up. I'll try to open the space a little bit more. Yeah. Rubbing from the inner knee to the front of the knee and around that outer edge. Well done. Wow, the steep. Ooh, really deep down the hip flexors. And walking those things, marching up and down. And last kapotasana. <laughs> Sharing with you a personal practice of mine. Not the lightest today, but that's the essence of self practice. Keep going. Keep practicing. Don't lose it. Don't rush, even if you've been in a certain position for countless of times, approach it as if it's your first time. And carry with care, utmost attention to the breath, and then safety is a very more uh, invaluable tool for a long-lasting self-practice because no one is guiding you at home, right? So you are your teacher. No judging. Yeah, if you can't do it for that particular session, try again. There we go. Well done, me. <laughs> and walk him, adjusting, and move him. Good. That's my back bend practice. Yeah. Jump it back, try. All right. And then from there, I'll do a combination of back bend and deep, opener, deep hip openers. So this is the stage where it may not apply to you anymore. Eh? Don't you ever attempt any of this. These are really deep and advanced ones and could permanently damage your body if you force it. You can just stay and then do this <laughs> and then just recover or lie down, do some twisting, reclining positions. Yeah. This one is the Gorakshan, Gorak. Sasgurakshasana on the Badrasana or the Mulabandasana. Some schools call it Mulabanda. But I'm going to progress it in a way that I will deeply rotate through my inner hip. My ankles will rotate, but it's not dead. It's really down there. Yes. So I'm rotating through those inner hip joints. And here, I'm gaining access to my Kandanadi. Yeah. Or the Lingam. Yeah, that oblong shape. Yeah, resting from below the belly button down 
the pelvic cavity or a little bit actually touches yeah, the belly button and this region. Yeah. And I go in and gain access to that oblong shape. Because what's in the middle, inside the Kandanadi is the Shishimna. Yeah. That's where the energy flows up. Mandukasana, yeah. releasing, <laughs> circling around, up and flipping over. Yeah. Kicking that leg, rubbing that shoulder. Okay, down dog. Let me do another one. Yeah. Yeah, I do mostly the elements more than once. Because the first one is like you're just trying to um, work your way into a deeper version of it. Yeah, but the second or the third one is the more meaningful and um, the more energetic one. When I say energetic, I, doesn't, I don't mean like you're just being strong. Energetic means yeah, in this practice of Hatha Yoga is yeah, you're gaining access to the inner energetic anatomy. And the haps, yeah, the nerve clusters yeah, traveling through your spine. And you know, sometimes I do my Udiana Banda here. Some blinking of the hands behind. Asana. And down and kicking those legs. Beautiful. Alternating. Three legged dog. You notice if I do myself practice, I look like an animal <laughs> slithering through, gliding through the joints. Right. Sutta Vajrasana. This is another technique I find really challenging. Oh, it's a challenging <laughs> one, actually, not just for me but for a lot of practitioners. And I, I wanted to really go deep because I'm open inside. If I do not go deep, yeah, my body will hurt after. Yeah, that's the, I say the hard truth about when your energetic anatomy is open yeah, you've gained access to it, and then you can't just back off. Yeah, you need to sustain it for the rest of your life. Yeah. 
I'll fall on one elbow so I can rub that around. And breathing in. And, and still adjust. You know, rubbing from shoulder to shoulder, hip to hip. And I use my tongue <laughs> to gain access to my deep shoulder pockets. Breathe. Wow. Good. This position never fails to yeah, impress me. Good. Like, every time I practice it, I gain deeper realizations uh, of the nature of the body. Or maybe because today I feel a bit like tighter than yeah, most of my practice day. It's quite cold in here. We're in the middle of winter and in the morning, the joints. Then I like the cold, yeah. Can do this. To open the side trunk, the other one. One more, this side. Yeah, to open this. Yeah, the nadis. Eat a pingala. All right, come up. All right. One more. Opposite shoulder. Which like did they do? Sometimes I forget. All right, that's it. And this my tight shoulder. Yeah, but I'll try. It's a deep thoracic extension. At the same time, deep back bend. And hip opener too. Sure, my microphone is not cutting off. Yeah, circle around, up and down. Side stretching. I feel like my inner body is brimming already. Pardon if I use my tongue a lot because. That's where I can really gain access to those deep pockets. Remember the lesson? Yeah. I've given you a while back about how the tongue is connected to the many channels and compartments and cavities and lines and spaces. It's one anatomical part of us which is very active in the meditative aspects of the practice. And then for me, this is actually meditation already. Yeah. All right. Two more, actually three more. Yeah. Dabada Padmasana. Leaning over that one knee. And fold in the middle. And for this 
uh, part of my self practice I do three different asanas one after the other Okay, and then from there, yeah, I roll to a gentle rocking and a bit of a shoulder stretch here. Sometimes I'll do flapping fish, but I feel like doing this to save time because I'll be teaching in an hour, so I only have this time for myself practice. And then today is busy. Right. Or well, sometimes I'll do halasana right away. Then I'll do the Viparita Karani Mudra. With the Navajo Mudra sometimes. Not sometimes, actually, all the time I do this. The soft palate at the back. Coming down. All right. A bit of this. In a thigh massage. Uh, to open the lines of the hips again. Preparation for the next one. Good. And I'll do one Sufta Kandasana. And this is like my variation, adding the side stretch into the asana in the Kandanadi. Yeah. Actually, we have like all concentric motion or um, shapes inside. From the Kandanadi, another here, and another here, and even the neck, yeah, and then the head. So we're like, the um, energetic anatomy is like, oblong shape inside yeah. from one point it goes to the side and intersects to the next second point yeah like layers I'll do a bit of a shake there All right and sitting on dasana Yeah, throwing the thigh bone in and settling in the position. Almost there. How long? Yeah, it took me, yeah, for me to be able to do this uh, techniques. Many years, really. I can't actually give you a figure. Yeah, but even then, yeah, my practice. Well, I say is quite fast. Yeah, 
It took me about maybe 10, 15 years. Yeah, that's still, that's a short time compared. Yeah. Well, my microphone is, yeah. Because this is my work. <laughs> I'm just so grateful to have the the support, <laughs> but entails lots of sacrifices. But I say it's my calling, yeah. Crossing and flipping backwards. It might not be perfect externally. What's what's important is how the inner body feels inside. I'm doing Plavini Pranayama. So I can open my Swadeshtana. Down, a bit of recovery. Yeah, working those inner hip joints again. <laughs> I might reach over to a twist. All right. One last. When the hips, uh, the inner hips are open, yeah, it might seem like externally, I'm rotating from my ankles and my knees. Yes, they move, but the reason why they move is because yeah, the thigh bones move inside, yeah and they just follow. It's like this, yeah? Once the, the hip bone, or the hip bones and the hip joints are able to move, your body will just rotate externally. All right, all right, hold that nice and deep. Up and down. And one more sitting. Kandasana. Yes, I, do kan I do Kandasana four times. Similarly, how I do my Kapatasana. And sometimes I would do it more. Yeah, if I feel like I fail to gain access to yeah. Those lines and spaces inside. As required from this position. Because the kandasana, yeah, from the word itself, kandasana, yeah, the kandanadi, yeah. So you have to trace through, yeah, the borders of that part of you. It's around the pelvic cavity. And what it does, yeah, it paves way for the opening of the middle channel, the shashumna, uh, so you can breathe through that line. 
not to mention, um, it's really powerful from, for um, treating, even healing the issues of the reproductive system. Uh, it's very revitalizing and rejuvenating. And rubbing here. All right. And I'll do one more round of the flapping fish to reset. Yes, the other one. Quite restless, eh? <laughs> it feels good. Okay. All right. About to finish. Alternating. Three legged dog. Yeah. I'll try to jump up there. Yes. Nice and light. And come down. Okay, from there, kneeling. Oh, stressing out. Kapotasana. After flexion, and you go back to extension. That really challenges your physical, energetic, mental discipline. Yes. All right. Okay, and just reposition, so I'm level. Sweet. Oh, wow. Every self-practice is like a first-time practice. This is about it. <laughs> Crazy, eh? <laughs> but if I don't do this, I will feel heavy, even tired, sluggish. Which brings me to the topic of, is it for us? Is it for you? Yeah. Because you know what? Once you've gained access to your energetic anatomy, your physical anatomy, more than 
an average person, or maybe 90% of the population, is capable of doing, then you can't back off. You have to face it, go into it, resurface safely, sanely, yeah. and then go through the process over and over and over again. And if there's one lesson uh, you may want to gain from this yeah, video is that yeah. generally we don't need them. Yeah. For the health and wellness of the body, for the peace and the clarity of the mind, just basic asana, basic pranayama, yeah, they're more than enough. Yeah. This is me, this is my nature, I'm a teacher, therefore I need to understand where the techniques originally come from, originally yeah, start from the very root, and even the meditation, so I don't talk uh, from a theoretical perspective, I speak from experience. Right. Inhale. And then when it happens through experience, you know the safety and the pitfalls, you know, you know uh, the real life essence, and not being too poetic and dramatic about it. Yeah. More real life. Yeah, close to you in the general. And then even the essence of spirit and yeah, the divinity of us, divinity in us, yeah, it's real life. Yeah. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for sharing your time with me and yeah, have a lovely day.